Now, returning to uh, some com concepts um, that we have uh, explored before, I just want to reiterate some of this um, very basic uh, uh, communications uh, concepts, fundamentals, um, which are unfortunately kind of missed these days because um, we, you know, we don't talk about it. We don't, uh, we, we think it's more important to deal with the higher uh, layers of communication and, um, you know, particularly just the applications. And we just rely on the fact that communications just work. And if we, if we do that, if we're, um, you know, taking that attitude, we do open ourselves up, unfortunately, to the possibility that we, uh, we don't understand, you know, something we don't know can, in fact, hurt us. Um, if we uh, fail to understand these basic concepts, there are ways that people can attack us uh, because we just aren't as familiar with our technology as we should be. So, um, coming again to uh, the baseband and broadband, again, uh, baseband, a single channel or a single frequency that we are communicating on. Um, the uh, um, we're, you know, basically, unless we're using time division multiplexing, um, we, we have a single session, we have a single uh, communications channel for use um, in that regard. Um, the uh, broadband, of course, we have the possibility of, uh, well, we have a range of frequencies or we have multiple frequencies, and we, um, when we use that, um, we also have the possibility of spread spectrum and uh, using uh, multiple frequencies to make it more difficult for any adversary to uh, jam our communications, to interfere with our communications, to inject traffic because, um, you know, we may be doing. And of course, we've got the frequency division multiplexing so that we can have multiple channels and if we uh, do both time and frequency division multiplexing together, we get this grid where we can use code division multiple access, CDMA, and um, it is, it's more efficient. Um, we have a uh, possibility of uh, greater traffic. I can remember um, teaching this uh, in an area of Vancouver um, where everybody and his dog has a cell phone or had at that point um, and uh, they uh, it, it was really difficult to get uh, a, a channel there were a lot of times when you pulled out your cell phone went to make a call and it you know said no available ch channels um, and uh, so as I was explaining uh, the efficiency of CDMA one of the guys in the class sort of you know deer in the headlights look and, and uh, so I asked him what was the problem and he said well I, I just realized I got a CDMA phone and I haven't had a problem getting a call through ever since I got that phone so uh, greater efficiency there and also of course the, the greater difficulty um, in terms of the adversary uh, trying to uh, jam our signals, uh, intercept our communications, uh, uh, inject traffic, you know, all, all of these things that we, problems that we have talked about. And um, CDMA uh, helps us a lot in, in a lot of these different ways. Now, uh, going back even further, um, there, there is the uh, uh, issue of uh, synchronous versus asynchronous communication. And uh, back in the days when we had to use modems uh, before 
everybody got fiber optic connection. Um, we knew more about this because some modems were synchronous or bisynchronous and uh, some were asynchronous. Um, synchronous communication has a timing aspect built into it. So you know when the next block of data starts, even if the block of data is a single character. Um, and space holders are being broadcast on the line as, as a timing signal all the time. And people dealing with this uh, are, you know, going to uh, understand that. Um, you can have more effective communications. You can know uh, when problems happen. You can know when somebody's trying to inject traffic because it's outside the timing pattern. Um, as uh, telephone lines got cleaner and communications got less error-ridden, uh, we went to asynchronous, um, at, which meant you could start transmitting data at any point. And you would do that by signaling that this is a start bit, um, this is where we start transmission, this is a stop bit, this is where we end transmission. And so we had a lot of uh, 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 overhead to that, but it allowed for uh, communication over a channel where we had not set up a timing signal. Um, and I guess the, the next area that we're going to go into, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk a bit about that. I suppose that we have now slipped from the physical layer into the data link layer because we are talking about bits, so we are talking about data. Um, so yeah, we've moved from physical to the data layer now.